One, two, three, four. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Swift Lessons for another jazz guitar tutorial. In today's session, I'm going to be showing you how to combine jazzy chord shapes with a walk-in bass line over a 2-5-1 progression in the key of C. Now, the 2-5-1 is easily the most common and the most important progression in all of jazz music. So we're going to get started learning how to play those chord shapes, then I'll show you how to play the walk-in bass line by itself, then we'll put those two elements together to create an exercise that's going to help you with your finger dexterity, your chord changes, but also reveal just some general solo jazz guitar technique. You can follow along using my tab at patreon.com slash swiftlessons, support the channel there for just a couple bucks a month, and gain access to a ton of extra resources for all my popular YouTube guitar lessons. Now, let's get started. Okay, a close look at the fretboard, getting started with section one of this lesson. Learning how to play the 2-5-1 progression in the key of C. This is one of the most used progressions in all of jazz music. So, it's gonna sound like this. Two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so the first chord is the two chord. If I look at my C major scale, that can reveal all the chords in this progression. The two chord in the key of C is going to be, let's see, that's a D note, so it's gonna be a D minor seven chord. Okay, I've got my middle finger on the low E string 10th fret. And with my ring finger, I'm barring across the 10th fret of the D string, G string, and B string. The A string is muted, and so is the high E string, allowing me just to strum through that shape. Okay, D minor 7 chord. Okay, now, once again, returning to my C major scale, I want to know what is the 5 chord in the key of C. C, D, E, F, G. Okay, so the five chord in the key of C is going to be some kind of G. We're gonna make it a G dominant seven chord. Okay, I've got the 10th fret of the A string, ninth fret D, 10th fret G, and the eighth fret of the B string. Okay, I'm gonna avoid the low E string and also mute the high E string. All right, this is just a C seven chord shape, just transposed to the key of G. All right, then we're gonna take it home to the one chord, C. All right, it's gonna be a C major seven chord. All right, I've got the eighth fret of the low E string. I've got the ninth fret of the D string, ninth fret of the G string, and the eighth fret of the B string. The A string and the high E string are once again muted. Okay, so there it is, three chords. The two, D minor seven, the five, all right, that's a G dominant seven, and the one, C major seven. Okay, now, the structure of the progression, uh, as it's going to serve us in this exercise, is going to be one measure on the two chord, one, two, three, four, a measure on the five chord, one, two, three, four, and two measures on the one chord. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Put all that together, see if you can play along. D minor seven. One, two, three, four. G seven. Two, three, four. C major seven. Two, three, four. All right, let's repeat it. Here we go. D minor seven. To the five chord. And to the one. Okay, if you can play those chord shapes, then we're gonna move on to section two of this lesson where we're gonna learn how to play a walk-in bass line. Then section three will just be putting those elements together. Okay, very good everybody. You've got some essential jazz shapes down. Now we're jumping into section two of this lesson. Learning how to play a common walk-in bass line for that two, five, one progression. So we're gonna be outlining the chords and then tying them together using upper and lower neighbors. Okay, so it's gonna sound like this. So one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, and two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so we're getting started on the 10th fret of the low E string, that D note for the D minor seven chord. We're going to play. All right, that's what we're playing over the D minor seven. We're on the low E string 10, then onto the A string, seven, eight, nine. 
It's very simple. We're just using quarter notes. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to do the same thing for the G dominant seven chord, but we're going down to the floor one string. Okay, so that was A string 10, then seven, eight, nine on the D. All right, there's our two chord and our five chord. One, two, three, four, one and two, three, four. All right, then for the C major seven chord, we're gonna play. There's a lower neighbor, and then going back to the root of the two chord D to start the entire thing over again. Okay, so again, for the C major seven, we're playing. So that was the 10th fret of the D string going down to seven. And then again on the A string. All right, then the final measure over the C major seven chord, we have the low E string eight, onto the A string seven, eight. And then we're going to the ninth fret of the low E string. All right, walking back up to the D minor seven chord shape to start the progression again. Okay, put all that together and we have a one, Two, three, four, D minor. G7. C major. C major. D minor. All right. Very good, everybody. If you have those chords down and you also have the walk in bass line, let's see if we can put them together now. Okay, very good everybody. You have the chords, you have the bass line. Now we're combining those two things together to come up with a practice routine that will give you some insight into solo jazz guitar. Again, it's gonna sound like this at a nice slow tempo, real slow. Okay, so measure one over the D minor seven chord shape. We're going to play the root note. Then use our hybrid picking to upstroke on the B string, G string, maybe a little bit of the D string. All right, and then we're gonna walk. Seven, eight, nine. Okay, walking up to the G7 chord. All right, then go to the G7 chord shape and do the exact same technique. Bass, then the highs, and then walk up to the C major seven. Okay, so the G dominant seven, bass, highs, D string, seven, eight, nine. You put those two chords together and we have D minor seven go into G seven. All right, then we're going to find another voice in of the C major seven chord shape to do this next part. Okay, my fingers are in a staircase position, okay? I've got the seventh fret of the high E string, eighth fret of the B, the ninth fret of the G string, and the 10th fret of the D string. I'm going to use the D string as my root, and then use my hybrid picking to grab the highs. It's going to be the high E string and the B string primarily. Okay, then from there, we're gonna walk down. All right, to finish up that measure, measure three there. Okay, so the chord. All right, then seventh fret D, 10th fret A, and then seventh fret A. All right, then the final measure. All right, I'm gonna grab that main position of the C major seven chord shape. All right, then I'm going to do the bass and the highs, just like we've been doing all along. All right, then we're going to play seven eight on the A string, and then that approach note the ninth fret of the low E string to start the entire thing back over again. C major seven. C major seven. All right, to combine some chord shapes and that very, very common walk-in bass line for the two, five, one. Okay, very good everybody, putting everything together that we just learned at a nice slow tempo. Getting started with the D minor seven chord shape. One, two, three, four, and D. G seven. C major seven. Walking down. C major seven. Repeat. All right, 
very good everybody. Practice that, it's gonna help you with your agility, it's gonna help you with your picking accuracy, your hybrid picking, those chord shapes, and then also just a general understanding of how to construct those bass lines around a chord progression. All right, friends, thanks so much for checking out this jazz guitar tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. As always, big thanks to my supporters at patreon.com slash I hope you're enjoying all those extra resources. And thanks to you guys, I got many more lessons coming up. So keep checking in, please subscribe, please share. This is Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia, saying happy picking.